first match of SWC 2022 starts now. And here we go. We've got Raigeki and we have Ismu getting into our first match in this year's SWC World Final here in Korea. This is going to be a good one to start with. I mean, you saw Ismu, their players already getting a little nervous. Ismu took a big sigh there. Uh, it'll be interesting to see, again, how their pick bands work out. Uh, what we're going to see here is that we're going to see uh, Ismu has opted to take first pick. And Ismu actually, Ricky was telling me in the back uh, that Ismu won the coin toss. So uh, Ismu felt like his first pick is most important here. Uh, I think we're going to see an Oliver. Yeah, Oliver and Volantis pre ban And next time around, it's probably going to be a Wunsa and then something else uh, that Ismu is going to choose a pre ban First pick's going to be interesting. It's going to tell us what Ismu, what kind of pace Ismu wants to play at. I think we're going to see a Shizuka or a Nano or something like that because that's what we saw in the previous matches. Goes with the Paraha. Interesting pick. Takes away Raigeki's bruiser, healer, strip. Yeah, I think that's exactly what that is. It's, it was trying to dig into the uh, very limited box. I'm not going to say extremely limited box, but the limited box of Raigeki for taking that Paraha. Raigeki, very quick. He's going to be taking a CR, 24 speed lead, and the Shizuka as well. Yeah, definitely a very limited box of Raigeki's there. I mean, Raigeki does not have a Chung Pong, remember. As we mentioned in previous streams, Raigeki fed his only Chung Pong a while ago. So he does not have that unit today. His move really dipping into Raigeki's box. Knows that Juno is a core unit of Raigeki's, chooses to take the Juno. I'm not exactly sure if he wants to take it that early though. Uh, hovering over the Dark Vanilla Cookie, one of the most powerful units in the game here with the ability to strip and slow on skill 3 and then provide Oblivion on skill wow. 2. Wow, does lock in that Dark Vanilla Cookie and the Dominic as well. Raigeki looking to respond to both those units. He does have that Juno now on his side of the field. Not too sure if he's going to look at that Juno knowing that there's Oblivion on the other side of the field already on the side of Ismu. Yeah, and Raigeki really needs to be thinking about going for Cleaves here, some sort of fast turn play here, and that's exactly what the Robo G92 does. Uh, Ismu's representing no real speed here. He's representing about 280 units, but all of them at 280 without a speed lead here. So he doesn't have the ability to take a first turn here. Uh, Ismu going with the Chungpong Ponto speed lead allows him to come out at around a 300, 305 range on Violent here. So Raigeki's really going to need to make a decision of what he wants to ban out, what he wants to lock down. We're going to see probably a fast threat last. Uh, and that's exactly what we see. We see the lore here, but I think Raigeki's going to be in a little bit of a tough spot. We're going to see Raigeki open this matchup with either the Robo or the Lore here. And then Ismu, he's going to need to get some stuns or disruption because Ismu has four very impactful units at the 280 speed range. So if Ismu can get these online here, he's going to have a lot of momentum. Well, Robo G92 in the Ponto's getting banned out, and here we go, guys. Let's get into it. That Dark Fear Vanilla is going to be taking turn one. The third skill getting the slows across the field of Raigeki. Praha with all skills available, of course. Goes a nice skill one onto the pass. So the damage coming out there. Serious matter comes with the field with the initial turn. Big second skill. Defense breaks land across the field. Not looking good for Raigeki. No, not looking good at all. That Praha still has skill three to provide that slow debuff. And this was just going to be able to take a lot of turns. Raigeki's not going to get a turn. He has slow debuff on his entire field. So at this point here, Raigeki's pretty much done for. Oh, not looking good at all. That's another digital turn coming out of the Praha. Praha is taking uh, not taking away, but dealing some more damage here. Dominic almost removing the Shizuka from the field. Shizuka defense broke. He's going to take a ton of damage from the Chung Pung. We need to see some sleeps coming out of this lore from to bounce back at all. But there's a revenge, and Praha is going to be kicking out in front, removing the Shizuka. Another additional turn is going to be coming out here. Praha, Ismu absolutely destroying the field of Raigeki. Yeah, Praha absolutely doing a lot. Ismu just getting the perfect opener, and Ismu takes the first match 1-0. Absolutely commanding lead by Ismu in that very first match there. At, I, we didn't even see Regeki make anything truly impactful in that match. Yeah, and Ismu there cracking a smile at his opponent there, knowing that his game pre-prepared game plan worked brilliantly. I mean, I don't think Raigeki was expecting to get outsped with those speed leads, outsped by a dark pure vanilla cookie. That was not something he expected. Uh, when you draft the way Raigeki did, you assume you're going to get the opener, and your opener needs to be good. If you don't get the opener, you instantly lose because your opponent, Ismu, has four units that are very impactful AoE units. And you saw, he was he didn't even need to use that Praha skill 3 to give him speed buff and cycle. He was able to take the time, let his Chung Pong do some work, uh, and basically just outspeed and cleave Raigeki down. Now, do we think that Dark Pure Vanilla, Vanilla Cookie is going to be in the ban list now as we go into our second match here? I definitely think so. I mean, that unit is probably at a speed that Raigeki is not able to deal with well. I mean, we saw Raigeki had speed lead plus Laura there and got outsped. So Raigeki didn't even have the ability to go first. So that Dark Pure Vanilla Cookie is probably around the plus 220 swift range. Somewhere really high that Raigeki doesn't have much to deal with. So I would think in this matchup coming up here, 
Gaigeki is going to dip into a segment and probably try to assert some sort of control over the open. All right, well, let's see what happens, guys. We get into our second match between Raigeki and Izmu. Pre-bans from last time. There's that Oliver, there's that Volantis. They are going to be available as we get into this match here. New pre-bans coming out here. Let's see if that Dark Pure Vanilla is going to get banned out or not. I think it's either that or the Wunsa. I don't think the Han's going to be pre-banned because Raigeki's just going to have to deal with the Han. So it's going to be either the Wunsa or the Dark Pure Vanilla. But judging by the speeds here, it might be that Dark Pure Vanilla. I mean, that thing doesn't, I don't think it trips off Volantis either. Uh, and there we go, the Dark Pure Vanilla ban. Uh, banned out from Raigeki, and Ismu taking out the segment. Not something we've seen take out from Raigeki too often before. Yeah, that segment getting pre-banned out there sounds like a little bit of homework done by Ismu, knowing to eliminate one of these very fast units that Raigeki does enjoy, like to uh, to, to draft here. But Raigeki with the first pick, let's see what he goes with, locks in. Yeah, Raigeki goes with the Shizuka here. Ismu not letting Raigeki take what he wants to take here. I think we're going to see some sort of a Sierra, some sort of a Nana, maybe a Volantis, some variation of these comps. Raigeki does not have a lot to play with here. So uh, we're going to see very neutral picks. That's generally what he goes with. Uh, I wouldn't even mind to see a, 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 a Masha at this point here. It wouldn't be too bad. But again, Sierra Volantis, as predicted, generally speed lead plus an AoE disruptor is a pretty neutral and strong open. Yep, and a very quick Oliver is going to get slammed down by Ismu with one other pick here after seeing the Volantis and CR being drafted by Raigeki. Here to see what this last pick is going to be. And it is going to be a Masha. Very meta relevant here for Ismu. Yeah, and I think Raigeki's kind of in a tough spot here because if Ismus, Juno, and Praha are at a good speed here, uh, they're going to outspeed Raigeki's entire team if that Oliver is let through. So Ismu has the ability to take a Tablo or some other speed lead last. So Raigeki's going to be forced to contest for speed now, and that's exactly what we've seen with the more. You see that Karno, but Karno's not exactly the best into a Juno, into a Masha. So uh, Raigeki's, again, with this limited box, kind of in a tough spot. Yep, there's that Annabelle coming out there. It might be signaling that we might have a ban on top of that uh, Juno right now. Yeah, we might have a... I think we're going to see a ban on the Oliver from Raigeki. I think he's going to value going first. I don't think I like that animal pick there. I would rather Ismu take a uh, second speed lead. But again, uh, I guess Raigeki decides to ban out the Oliver, so he's going to be facing... Uh, just Animal, so he's going to be facing an Oliver uh, throughout the match here. Yeah, well, 33 speed lead for Ismu. Is that going to be fast enough to take turn one here? And it is. That is very fast Praha here. Definitely very fast Praha. And Raigeki's going to need to proc that uh, revenge from the uh, Volantis, but... This move wisely does not use skill 2. Yep, Raigeki going in, full strip here, not getting the Masha, of course. And we're going to have all of us going to get a reset after a pushback on top of that Waterloo Q. We have our Volantis, big skill 3, only getting stunned there on top of the Praha. Glancing lane on top of the Masha will be impactful later on. Yeah, and actually pretty big miss on that Oliver. Oliver's going to be able to reset and do Oliver things here uh, once it gets a turn here. So Raigeki is forced to use that skill 3, and he's going to need to have a very impactful turn from Carnal, but Big stun onto that Carnal. Oh, but a very lucky Violent Proc coming out of that Carnal, though. He has all skills up here. He could lay down the lobby with that big second skill, the third skill. Goes up the third skill. Hopefully gets those uh, slows on top of everybody. Not getting on top of everybody at all. Yeah, not getting on top. But that's going to be a big heal coming out from that Juno once it gets a turn. There's only two two, two units for Raigeki moving in front. So that's a big heal coming. And Raigeki's going to need to do a lot of damage if he wants to sustain a lead. Let's see what that skill 2 is going to be going on. So it goes right on. And he wants to get that third skill back up there. We get a Despair stun and a Violent Proc coming out of that Masha. And another additional turn coming out of that Oliver as well. Wow, super lucky to get that Violent Proc back to back here. Uh, really unlucky for Raigeki. That Karnal's not even going to have skills once it takes a turn. So Raigeki really not going to have too many cooldowns to take it, take momentum back. Yeah, Raigeki getting a little lucky not getting Despair Stun on that Karnal once again. But we've got Water. You're looking for Despair Stun himself. Not receiving anything there. Masha with Karnal in sight. There's a little bit of damage coming out. We only have a skill one left. The Shizuka. All skills up are available with this Prowl. Putting everybody to sleep. Not exactly everybody to sleep on Raigeki's side. Yeah, and there's Speed Buff going on the side of Ismu. And Ismu has a Masha that's going to be able to do a lot of damage. And he has Oliver with skills. So that's a lot of momentum on Ismu's side. Raigeki doesn't really have a lot of attack bar on his side. He has slow debuff, so he's in a lot of trouble. Definitely in a lot of trouble indeed. We can see that third skill come out on top of Shizuka. Not getting the, the full attack bar pushback, though. But the Despair Stun does finish off that Volantis with the Juno, though. Yeah, it does finish off that Volantis. And when you look at this here, Raigeki doesn't have a lot of damage left on the field. There are four units with full HP on Ismu's side. Oh, Another unit Lord. goes down. Ismu's looking so strong today. So strong indeed. Beautiful additional turns, dropping those units like that. Another Despair Stun going out onto the Shizuka. Oh, just so much going Ismu's way. Raigeki had enough. Ismu taking round two. Wow, and Ismu just using his monster box to his advantage here, not letting Raigeki have a chance at all. I mean, Ismu understands the speeds of both drafts here. He's able to make sure that he either gets an opener or he's able to play back in a way that gives him the most advantage over time. And of course, got a few lucky despair suns 
Uh, got a few lucky procs along the way. But again, Raigenki's window of opportunity to win is so narrow in these matchups. Yeah, it really is, but I think Raigeki's definitely going to be thinking about this third match here. I think he should have took his time. I knew that match definitely was a big loss for him, but I think what Raigeki needs right now is time. Time to think and time to plan for his next match here. But either way, guys, we're getting into that third round very, very shortly with Raigeki and his move. Yeah, I think Raigeki just needs to make make an adjustment here, needs to figure out how he can have a better, either a better turn two or fight for that turn one. We didn't see that segment come out in that first match. I would like to see that picked out. I would like to see some sort of an Eshir, some sort of an Ethna come out. We know he has those units, uh, so he needs to fight for turn one a little bit more and force his opponent to resist and take advantage, do a little bit more damage off the bat. Well, excited to see what Raigeki has for us, and excited to see if Izmu gets the big 3-0 or not up against Raigeki here. Yeah, I mean, at this point here, I mean, 2-0 is such a commanding spot to be in in this situation here. I mean, obviously, you're in a best of five up 2-0, but again, Izmu has the advantage in box versus box. Oftentimes in these matchups, it's player versus player, not ladder rating versus ladder rating. This was been playing very well today, and we'll see what he brings in the third match. All right, let's see it, because we're starting up right here. Free bans from last time's segment, and that Doc Pro pure, pure Vanilla getting uh, free banned out, but they are now available. We now have Oliver and Volantis that are free banned here in this third match. Yeah, so Raigeki needs to find a way to avoid being in that situation he was in the first match. Basically locked out completely. So he's probably he's probably now noted the speed of that pure vanilla, so knows not to deal with it. Again, takes that segment as called for. He needs to disrupt turn one. That's exactly what he goes with. We're likely going to see Izmu go with the Juno here, steal something from Raigeki, and then potentially take some sort of a, either a speed lead or either a Masha is actually okay. So like a Juno Masha feels all right, or, or even like some sort of Masha Shizuka or something, some variant of that sort to dip into Raigeki's box. Yeah, I think he's definitely going to be taking that Shizuka. I feel like Shizuka feels like the right pick, especially when CR has already been laid down onto the field as well. Can add a ton of volatility uh, to the draft here. But let's see, he's taking his time for sure. I mean, we're going to see that a lot of these players taking up their time here. And it looks like Izmu is going to wrap up his draft there with So I think Raigeki's going to go with the Robo G92 here. Izmu's side is very cleavable. We were looking at that 280 range here. Robo G92 hits the board here. Goes with the Barber. That's a pretty all-in pretty all opening, actually, when you look at the Barber there. So. Raigeki tells us exactly what he wants to do here. I'm not sure about that Barbara pick, but again, pretty hard to punish that at this stage when your opponent is was taking three 280, 280-ish speed units. Pretty easy to spun, uh, to punish with an AOE team like this. Well, Ismu taking a speed lead for himself here. It's going to be that Ponto to protect himself with some beautiful holy ground here. If we get that off here, and that's going to be a lot of protection. Of course, he's going to wrap up his draft here with the Shizuka. Yeah, wrapping up with the Shizuka here, and if I'm Raigeki, I'm looking to ban out either that Pontos or the Shizuka, and looking to use this last pick here to probably AOE weekly Again, a Chungpong would be amazing, but unfortunately Raigeki does not have a Chungpong here. Goes with the Tablo, I'm not sure if that's uh, the perfect pick here, but I think it's a great pick. Allows him a lot of versatility, speed lead, a lot some AOE control, and uh, ability to proc into the game here. Again, I think we're going to see either a Pontos or a Shizuka ban. Uh, I would lean toward a Pontos ban here, but if he takes the second, especially with that second speed lead. Yeah, definitely bans that one of the speed leads. Pontos is going to take the ban. Tablo is going to take the ban. And I mean, we're going to have leader skills coming out, and then it's going to be a very obvious 24 leader skill, for, uh, 24 speed lead for Raigeki and a 33 HP for Izmu. We have round three coming here right now. Izmu looking to close things out. Raigeki looking to keep himself still in here. And there's a massive resist on the Shizuka. Absolutely massive resist, but it comes down to this Robo. Does the Robo get all the strips? If the Robo's able to get all the strips and stun everything, that could give Raigeki the tempo he needs. One, two, three. Four! Guiding all four stuns with that Robo G92. Bombs are going to be coming out. Keep in mind there is no reset on top of that Shizuka just yet. Bomb lands true on top of the Praha. So, uh, like a little bit of attack bar here. No additional turns coming out of Praha this time here. We do have that third skill still available on the second bit. Looking to finally land it, and he does get it on top of the Shizuka just in time for that additional turn to pop up. Very, very good protective play from Raigeki there. Does reset that Shizuka and is pushing the advantage here. Raigeki has a lot of tempo here and is going to be looking to take out two units soon. Definitely looking for that. Bombs are going to be landing true. Ciara on her game right now. Defense break and the dismount on top of the Masha. Raigeki finally finding a little bit of ground to start his run here. Looking to get a big finish on top of his move. A little bit of damage going towards the Shizuka. We're going to see some pretty good damage coming out of that Masha. Masha with this will turn. Big poke damage coming on to the CR. CR down to about 50%. Your curse is beautiful going out. A little bit of defense breaks and heal blocks on the field of Izmu. Yeah, but it's not quite over yet. Still losable, but Raigeki in a great spot. He's going to go four units in one year. And I think Raigeki's going to be able to take one and say, not just yet.
not just yet indeed because that's a lot of attack bar reduction right there looking for a little bit more damage going out onto the shizuka shizuka with no skills up here even this additional turn and there you have it raigeki holding on in round three great draft from raigeki they're pivoting as expected they're needing to fight for turn one not not letting his opponent dictate the flow of the game here generally at high level play you want to go first force your opponent to resist and actually he got a little unlucky missing that shizuka off the bat there so Kind of unlucky, but he had enough redundancy with that Barber. With that uh, Robo G92, he's able to take the game from there. So, in this match, uh, Raigeki's going to have to face an Oliver. And that's going to change the dynamic a lot. We might see a repeat of game two. Uh, I think Raigeki got a little unlucky there. But, again, Raigeki does have a narrow opportunity, with narrow window of opportunity to take any of these here. Most definitely. This is going to be a very, very interesting match. This is pretty much where both players are learning from everything. We've had three matches that Raigeki is learning stuff from. And Ismu obviously not wanting to take another loss here. So things are definitely going to get interesting as we get into game number four. Yeah, as we get into game number four here, Ismu is going to want to, I mean, obviously going to want to win every single match. But this is important because if he loses this one, no one wants to get reverse swept. That's not a position you want to be in. You're going to remember that one forever. So this is a really important match for Ismu here. It's important for both, but you don't want to get reverse swept. Ever. Nope. Not at all. Ismu's really going to be putting his A game on right now. Not that he hasn't been putting his A game on throughout this match, but Ismu does not want to take this loss. And we're getting into this match right now. Game number four, Raigeki Ismu. And we're going to see the same pre-bans we saw in game two, I think, probably Dark Cookie, and then we're going to see uh, Ismu take out that segment. That's exactly what we see. I think Raigeki probably felt he got a little unlucky, which is what we saw. We saw that Karno the spare stun, re uh, and then procs on the other side over and over. So I think if we play that out again, Raigeki probably has a 60% chance of winning that or so. So he might be content to run that one back. Oh, he's going to be taking that pro uh, a Juno as a first pick for Raigeki. Very interesting uh, decision from him. Yeah, very interesting decision indeed here. Uh, we know Raigeki has one of the best, if not the best, Juno in the world there. Uh, instead, decides to go for Praha here, uh, knowing that uh, Praha is better into Juno, right? It's a water unit into fire, so you want to take that Praha. Give yourself that speed buff. Uh, and Ismu is probably going to respond with some sort of a Oliver and then a Dominic, or some, or maybe an Oliver and a uh, some other unit to pair with an Oliver. You could see a Masha as well. I think Oliver and Dominic's a little weird because it's two win units, but Oliver, Masha, Oliver, Chung Pung's interesting. That, it's really interesting knowing that Raigeki doesn't have the Chung Pung. <laughs> Quick as that, Raigeki slams down Juno Masha. Yeah, Raigeki exploiting the weakness of two win units off the bat, going with two fire units here. Ismu's taking the uh, Water Ryu here, and I wouldn't be surprised to see another AoE unit of some sort here. Uh, we're gonna, or even a single damage deal like a Han. I wouldn't be surprised to see a Han, even though it's another speed lead. Some sort of AoE or some sort of high impact, high damage unit coming from Ismu here. See what happens here. Yeah, I think Ismu I'm could sorry. also think about taking a, a Robo of sorts. Uh, goes with the Han as predicted here. And Raigeki instantly laying down that Nana Volantis. Really like, ooh, I'm not sure about that Wunsa pick there. I do not like that pick. I think uh, Ismu is banked on too much speed here. It leaves him a little, that Wunsa is not great into whatever Raigeki's bringing. Raigeki has a great turn two comp. Uh, Ismu already has the speed advantage with that Water Ryu, so I'm not sure about that Wunsa. So Water Ryu and Wunsa are gonna be allowed through. I think we're gonna see a Han ban, or probably an Oliver ban, because it's the most RNG. But definitely Water Ryu and Wunsa are the two weaknesses in Ismu's comp right now. Yeah, it looks like that Han's gonna get the boot, and so is the Volantis. No other Nat 5s, well, minus that Wunsa. Gonna get banned out here. And in this situation here, Ismu doesn't have a lot of damage, actually. He's got Oliver and the Chung Pung, but Raigeki's got two fire units here. So I think Raigeki's got a great turn two comp. Yeah, most definitely, but let's get into it. We've got Wounds to take the first turn, using that third skill there. And of course, we've got Wataru who's gonna kick it up right after him. The Spare Stun going out onto the Pra. Serious Matter coming out with a big resets across the field. With again, the additional turn coming out of this Chung Pung. And we've got Oliver who's gonna be kicking things off, possibly removing that Pra from the field. Yeah, that's an absolutely Massive proc by the Chung Pong and also proc by the Oliver there because defense break makes Raigeki's units a lot more squishy and his Water Ryu and the Wounds take turns before Raigeki's team. So, really lucky by Ismu there. It really is. Double two piece in, in SWC already coming out of Ismu with that Chung Pong. Chung Pong looking so strong right now. Does get that slow applied onto the Oliver, which is definitely a little bit of saving grace for Raigeki, but that's going to be the dismount there on top of the Masha. Keep in mind there's still one orb on top of the Nana. Looking for a despair stun coming out of Raigeki. See if he goes for that second skill. 
opting to go for the first skill. It's like a little bit of attack bar with that first skill. Yeah, Raikeki's basically going to be looking for uh, to take out that Oliver here. I really think Ismu should have thought about taking out some of the units here. That Nana still has an orb there. And Ismu's going to be running out of steam if he doesn't get more proc. So Raikeki might be able to come back if, if the Juno can get a few Despair Suns and if that Masha survives this next round of attacks. Yep, a little bit of attack bar pushback there going out onto the Nana. We get that first skill looking for a two-turn sleep on top of the prod. Not going to be it here. Ghost Nick Fuji gets a double Despair Stun on top of the Wounds and that Oliver. Absolutely massive double Despair Stun and massive lack of kill on that Praha there. Yeah, Praha is staying alive here, but it doesn't get dropped just yet. Keeping that orb up on top of the Nana. Big second skill, getting Despair Stun on top of the Juno. Juno's going to heal up just a little bit here. Looking to drop that Oliver probably as soon as possible. Possible Despair Stun going on top of the Chunk Punk as well, though. Yeah, Raigeki does need to take out that Oliver right now here. Get that orb on that Nana because we know Chunk Punk has skills up again there. So it's a lot of damage that Raigeki's going to be eating here. Yep, it really is. I mean, uh, Ismu's got a couple oh, options looking for Despair Stun going on top of the Nana. All skills can be available with the Chunk Punk. And again, with the additional turn after a serious matter. Wow, really lucky proc here by Ismu. Again, getting those defense breaks softens Raigeki's team up here. So un unfortunately, Raigeki's not going to have a Masha again. He's going to need to rely on that Juno to win. I don't think uh, Juno's going to be able to do this against a Water Ryu. Yeah, definitely. That's going to be really tough. Lucky Despair Stun though going out on top of the Water Ryu, though. But there's that big second skill taking out the rest of that Masha. No orbs going to be available here. Looking for Despair Stun coming out of the Nana here. The only gets the attack break, though, skills available. Use the third skill. That's it. It's just a lonely Juno. Raigeki's not a fan of this. You can already tell that this is going to be it in Ismu. We'll be moving forward in today's tournament.